Hi peaches, it's Shelva. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. Happy Monday. For those of you who are regulars, you know what that means. It's time for us to dive deep into the AITA subreddit. Why do we do that? Because it's a little bit of fun. It's a little bit of juicy drama because it hopefully helps a couple people out, whether it be the original posters of the problems that we're going to look at today or other people who may be in a similar position. Because you know, we're all human whilst also hopefully expanding our own mindsets along the way. You know the drill, my loves. Let's go fish in for some a-holes be kind downstairs in the comment section let's go am i the asshole for telling my husband that he can't go to the toilet you know when you hear people say oh that person's whipped that is what i think of when i hear this sentence <laughs> let's see like many men my husband spends about half an hour on the bog i have no idea why or how it takes so long but it takes an age do you know what i totally agree <laughs> with this sentiment it is a gender stereotype and i don't know why it exists for men only. I feel like among my generation and younger, the reason is mobile phones and specifically short form content. Getting stuck watching one real short TikTok, whatever it might be, means that you're stuck watching 50 and before you know it, someone's calling you down for dinner. But what is the excuse of the older generation who are not stuck to social media or at least who weren't. Anyway, OP says, this didn't bother me before we had a baby. Now it irks me no end. He got back from work today. He held the baby for a whole five minutes before the baby began screaming. So my husband just hands the baby back to me. I have to eat my dinner, which I made whilst holding a screaming baby. I had to ask twice for him to take the baby when he'd finished eating so that I could finish. And as soon as I'd finished my food, he said, I need the toilet whilst holding the baby out for me to take. I simply told him no. I see where the title comes in. I told him to spend some time with the baby and to stop palming them off on me. Specifically, I asked him to wait for 10 minutes. I didn't say he couldn't use it at all. My husband has zero skills in soothing our crying baby. He just hands the baby back as soon as the crying begins or he just goes there, there whilst he can Jimmy's doing whatever he's doing. Da da, da da, da da. It annoys me that he doesn't try or practice getting our baby to calm down. So, am I the asshole for telling my husband not to go to the toilet? Look, this title is super misleading. It sent us all in the wrong direction. And I think it's safe to say, with the context of this post, that no, my love, you're not the asshole. Maybe you're a bit cheeky for this title because it's not you telling your husband not to go to the toilet, it's you encouraging your husband to understand what parents means <laughs> and learning to problem solve when you got a screaming baby on your hands and a partner who seems super rushed off their feet and is trying to enjoy a meal the only time that I do think you'd be an asshole right is if your husband turned around to you and went look I really need to go and you were like no <laughs> then I'd have a problem I guess it also depends on the context doesn't it how old is the baby can you pop the baby in a little crib maybe it's a possibility for you to take baby with you to the loo I don't know if that is necessarily hygienic I don't know if that's a great idea it just came out of my mouth to be fair, I have seen my mum take my sisters to the loo. A single parent's got a parent, what are you gonna do, you know? If you need to go, you need to go. But in all seriousness, I see your point and I do not think that you are the asshole. Oh, I feel like that was a very easy one to start today's video. Not the asshole, but this is about him avoiding responsibility and not really about the toilet. Mm -hmm, I agree. Not the asshole. I have to assume most people posting here have never had to watch a baby for a significant amount of time. A person home with a baby all day doesn't get to spend 30 minutes in the bathroom. It simply doesn't doesn't happen. Yes, even if they have to poop, which everybody does, including Beyonce. The baby pretty much has to come with you or you have to wait for a more convenient time, nap time, ETC. I don't know why dad is not expected to do the same. It's a ridiculous double standard. Here we go. Opie's husband can use a toilet whilst holding a crying baby like every stay at home mum since the dawn of time. Or stay at home parent for that matter. Nature waits for no one. <laughs> Let's go fishing once more. Am I the asshole for giving my son non-vegan food behind my wife's back? All right, we've got the spice. I can see it already. Maybe not Nando spicy chicken, but a spicy portobello mushroom or tempeh or something. I'm a 32 year old man and my wife is a 33 year old woman. We've been married for eight years and we have a 12 year old son together. Cute. Do you know I really had to call myself out there? Cause I was like, how can your son be 12 if you've been married for eight? Gosh, society norms are like really stuck in there, huh? About six years ago, my wife decided to go vegan. After a long conversation, I agreed to go vegetarian and be vegan in the house and around her, which she was happy with. That is a commitment, let's read on. She also decided that our son should be vegan, which after seeing a dietitian, I also agreed with. Now I'm gonna be honest, I cannot have an opinion on the points, the nature of what is being discussed here because I have heard so many conflicting things. I can anticipate all sorts of comments in this forum from some people being like, yes, 
go you, raising a vegan household, and then other people being, oh, but a vegan diet is not good for a child. I'm just putting out there right now that I do not know the answer to that or where things should stand. Things have been fine with this arrangement until a few months ago when I began finding wrappers from non-vegan candy and even burgers from McDonald's in my son's school bag. He'd been buying that with his chore money. I had a conversation with my son and he confessed he felt lonely and excluded eating vegan around his friends and that they always had much better candy than he did and it wasn't fair. That is such a kid's reasoning. Like I was thinking forward as to what this kid might be thinking and candy competition was not there <laughs> in my mind as a potential reason. But you know what? Fair. I feel like a really strong part of me, if this is the only reason, if it really is just about a FOMO of not having the same candy that your friends have, I feel like I tried to reason with my son in letting him know that that isn't a fantastic reason for going away with your morals. I get it. It's not smoking. It's not alcohol, but it is peer pressure, right? With this reasoning only and feeling left out for not feeling cool enough, like I feel like that's not a good enough reason to want to stop doing something that otherwise you would uphold. I get it. It's a really complex thought process for a child, but also like candy kittens are so cool. <laughs> I get it, it's not Cadbury's and when your friends are having Cadbury's, you're like, oh, I want Cadbury's. But I feel like in 2023, there are some really cool vegan sweet options out there. And I definitely tried to have that conversation. But I think I would also be probing to see if that really was the only reason my son was no longer eating strictly vegan. Because I don't know, even for a child, that feels like not the most rational reason. I decided that I didn't want him spending his pocket money on snacks and throwing out the vegan snacks that we actually bought him instead of buying games, etc. It made no sense to me. But I also know the way my my wife feels about non-vegan products. So I began buying my son what he wanted on our way to football practice instead. As in without the mum knowing? because that doesn't feel so fantastic to me. Long story short, my wife recently found out what's been going on and completely flipped out. Oh, so I am guessing this is without the mum knowing. She called me an animal abuse enabler and a few other names and said that I was corrupting our son. Now she's not speaking to me. Our son panicked and told her that I'd bought the snacks from him and he didn't know that they weren't vegan. I don't blame him for that. Okay, he just doesn't want to be in trouble with mum. Am I the asshole here? Oh, I feel like we need to rewind and just unpack that last little step there. I'm trying to think about how I feel about the mum blowing up at the dad there and I don't think that's very fair. I feel like if the mum had ample opportunity to hear the dad's experience in that he found that the son was doing it independently then it's not really fair for the mum to call the dad any kind of words or attack him for allowing his son to choose what he wants to eat. How old is he? He is 12 years old. He is of an age, right, where he can make his mind up himself. If he doesn't want to be vegan, he doesn't want to be vegan. And I don't feel like a parent can force that on a child. I do think if it conflicts with your values as a parent, you don't have to provide that for him. Like if you are a fully vegan household, I can totally appreciate not wanting to cook meat or have meat products in your house. But if your son wants to use his own pocket money to buy non-vegan sweets outside, I just don't see any world in which we should stop that. We're raising children, the next generation, to be their own independent beings. Okay, verdict, verdict. We're missing a badge. I'm gonna say everybody sucks here, but I don't mean everybody sucks here. I mean multiple people suck here. Everybody sucks here except for the son, who I really think is just doing his own thing, and I don't even blame him for lying at the end, because if the mum's gonna flip out in the way that she did, she's not providing an environment in which the son feels safe to be himself. Mum sucks for that reason. Reason. Dad also sucks, I think, for not having a conversation with mum about it and keeping that from her. Oh, as always, Peaches, communication is key. I feel like this could have been significantly less blow up y if dad had, sure, gone with son and allowed him to buy the food that he wanted to buy, but then went back to mum and went, hey, just wanted to let you know I had a chat with son about this because this happened. He's wanting to do this. We should let him explore what he wants to explore. Let's talk about boundaries that work to keep all of us happy, right? Like, I feel like that's the way this should have gone. Not, let's keep it hush hush and not tell mum until she eventually finds out anyway and then has a got us both. Ah, okay, okay. I'm definitely, I'm feeling the spice. I'm feeling the warmth. May just be the heat wave that we have in the UK though. Not the asshole. I think my answer at this point would be, our son is old enough to decide what he wants to eat and what his dietary preferences are. If we put him into a situation where he feels he has to hide things from us, that's on us. Yes. Yes, I think that's actually really, really powerful. <laughs> Too many times where there's an authority figure and something is being kept from them, we blame the person that feels unsafe rather than the person who is making them feel unsafe. And I just don't think that's very fair. I really do think a really large part of good parenting is realizing the environments that you're creating. And if a child is acting a certain way, it's about 
thinking where they've learnt that from rather than shouting at them for being that way because anger, violence, confrontation, it's rarely helpful. Oh, someone else says, I don't know what dietitian they're talking about but I know a few and they'll all tell you that it's nearly impossible for a growing child to get the nutrition that they need from a vegan diet. For a 12 year old boy who plays football it's basically completely impossible. His diet isn't healthy for him at this point plus at 12 he has to make his own choices. Somebody else says there are a lot of charlatans out there masquerading as dietitians. Dietitians have degrees in nutrition and have to fulfill continuing educational credits and must be licensed and registered whereas nutritionists are not required to do any of these things. I've seen this a lot. It's like the difference between professional and amateur therapists right? Like we need to be careful about verifying the sources of where we get our information from. As I said I really don't know enough about the vegan diet at all but I hope for this family that they just allow everyone to be who they want to be. If the wife wants to be vegan great. If the husband also wants to be vegan or vegetarian and vegan at home great. If the son also wants to be vegan great but if any of these parties do not want to do things we shouldn't be forcing people to be something that they're not. It's as simple as that. We can encourage people, we can explain to them why we would like something to be a certain way, but if they do not want to do that thing, I don't think it is anybody else's responsibility to force them to do it. And obviously there are exceptions to that, right? If they're causing a serious harm, it's not part of the status quo. Well, to be honest, even if they are causing a serious harm, there's a time in which we need to just let people make their own mistakes, right? Like I'm sure most parents who see their kids, not the age of 12, but the age of 18 plus, smoking and drinking a lot as in in a way where they're not in control of themselves they don't want to see their kids doing that you can say hey don't smoke you can say hey don't drink but if that person continues to do that thing as much as you might want to you just can't force them to not do something that's not how people work we got to support people we got to be there for people we got to encourage people to do the right thing but we can't dictate oh all right should we move on to another one, my loves? Am I the asshole for embarrassing someone by pretending to be Japanese? Oh my gosh, this sounds so problematic. I'm a little bit nervous to read on. OP has kindly provided a bit of a backstory. I feel like we need one. I'm a 20 year old woman and I have a Japanese name even though I am not ethnically Japanese. My mum is Korean and my dad is British. They met and fell in love while studying in Japan uh, and had me there after marrying. Uh. We lived there until I was 14 before moving to the States and this will be important later on. It's like we're in a movie and we've just opened to the prequel and now we're seeing that screen that's like 20 years later. But hang on, before we do move on, just to clarify, so you are not technically Japanese. You're half Korean and half British, but you were born in Japan and you've been raised for your formative years for the first 14 years of your life in Japan and then you moved to the States. All right. Okay, today a group of my roommates friends came over to study with her and I happened to be in the living room when they arrived. Okay, so if you're 20, does that mean that you're in university? Which is like college in the States, right? I don't know what the US equivalent is to UK college. Doing further education of some kind. Okay, they were introducing themselves to me and when I said my name, I have a pretty common Japanese girl's name, so it's quite hard to be mistaken about the origin. I'm trying to think of even just one traditional Japanese name and I don't think I could think of a name that is typically Japanese. I definitely need to expand my cultural horizon. OP says one of the girls made a disgusted face and laughed at me saying that was so dumb. Ooh. That's not very nice. She said that she was Japanese American and I was culturally appropriating her country as a white person. Mm hmm. I tried to explain that I lived in Japan for a while and that was why, but she kept insisting that I was lying and that if I was telling the truth, I would be able to speak the language. This friend doesn't sound very friendly, I'm not gonna lie. Since she put it like that, I started talking to her in Japanese, whew, basically explaining where I lived there and asking which prefecture, is that a Japanese thing? Is that just a word that I don't know the meaning of? Which prefecture her parents were from, etc. She ended up stuttering through a sentence in an awkward manner before leaving in a huff. Don't start something you're not gonna finish, friend. That's all I'm gonna say. Later, my roommate told me that I embarrassed her by pretending to be more Japanese than an actual Japanese person and appropriating the culture. Oh Lord. And that her friend expected an apology. My roommate doesn't think that I did anything wrong, but now I feel kind of bad. Am I the asshole? Hang on a second. So your roommate said that you embarrassed her. Oh, is the roommate just sharing what her friend said. That makes sense. So she's like, I don't think you did anything wrong, but she thinks that you pretended to be more Japanese than the actual Japanese person appropriated her culture. Okay, that makes more sense. Am I the asshole? Mm, uh, no, I cannot see a world in which you are the asshole. You know what people say about assumptions, right? They make an ass out of you and the friend here clearly assumed that just because you were white, you didn't have any entitlement to the culture. I think what this really talks to is a very common problem faced by people who are in some ways multi-racial, multi-identity, 
multi-identitied, multinational, especially when there's this element of invisible race, right? And I feel like personally, I've heard this a lot in terms of South Asian culture and in terms of black culture, because that's where colorism is most prominent. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist in other cultures, I'm just stating that that's where my experience is being drawn from. Being South Asian, for example, I've seen incredibly dark brown skinned people not like people like me, or I've even seen people who are sort of my shade of brown, my milk chocolateness, not like people who are quite light and fair skinned, and it's all just totally ridiculous because it's coming from a place of oppression that ultimately comes from racist white societies, right? This this kind of pick me, no, you're more white, therefore you're more accepted, which therefore means that I can't accept you. And when that happens, we're left with a group of people who are left feeling really uncomfortable, not just because they are a person of colour and are having to deal with all of the discrimination and the stigma that comes from that, but they also then don't quite fit in to this community that they're kind of being ostracised for. And that is a real shame that there is this level of infighting and not this level of compassion that should be seen from people who are all experiencing the same thing. And I'm saying that I've experienced this as a lighter skinned, lighter skinned brown person. This is not appropriate vernacular, it's not something that I want to become sort of just a common phrase. And so I can't imagine how it must feel for people who are white passing but still have very heavy cultural, national, ethnic identifiers with an identity that is not just white. People like OP here who had no choice at all in where they were born, in what they were named, or where they grew up for the first 14 years of their life. And people who like OP have every reason to resonate and identify with Japanese culture. Because if you've grown up in your formative years being in this place, you are literally bilingual. Not that you have to be bilingual to be able to experience and you know identify with those cultures. I'm just saying that's a pretty big marker, right? That you are not pretending to be Japanese at all, then who is anybody else to tell you that you are not that? Just because you have a certain skin colour and someone else doesn't, doesn't mean that you can judge someone or exclude them from being part of a group where their evidence and their life experience clearly means that they should be within that group. Having said that, there are distinct differences. For example, OP, being able to identify and having the experience and the background of a certain culture or nationality is very different to being of a certain race colour. Having the lived experience of a person of colour. I've seen this so much within South Asian communities. I'll give an example because I feel like I'm perhaps not being as clear as I should. I am Mauritian, which means I participate in South Asian culture. I grew up with South Asian culture, both here in the UK and in Mauritius. I eat ethnic foods. I wear ethnic clothes. I speak an ethnic language. I participate in ethnic practices. And alongside that, I also have brown skin. However, there are so many people out in the world who do not have brown skin, but still have brown heritage. Brown heritage. That being South Asian heritage, right? One of my best friends has a grandpa who is Indian and therefore knows of and eats certain foods that I'm used to eating that other white society is like, huh? What's that? Now this friend of mine can absolutely say that they are Indian in some way. It's literally running in their blood. But even if it wasn't running in their blood and it was simply experience that they were immersed in, they still have a right to be able to feel proud of being immersed in that experience. What they cannot do, however, as a white person, would be to turn around and be like, I understand your experience as a person of colour. That's a very different thing. But that's not what OP is doing here. Firstly, OP is in some way Eastern Asian. They are half Korean and half British. I totally appreciate that Eastern Asian cultures within, just like other parts of the world too, are not the same thing. Korean culture I'm sure is incredibly different to Japanese culture, just like Pakistani culture will be different to Bengali culture. But the fact that OP doesn't have Japanese blood running through them does not negate the fact that they spent 14 years of their life in Japan, particularly growing up, right, like their entire childhood in Japan. This is a very long way of me saying who the frick does a roommate's friend think they are for being able to police a culture. You are one person, sure, but if you're not going to be open to hearing what someone else has to say, and then that person's then going to prove because they can speak Japanese to you, you need to eat humble pie and be like, whoop, my bad. I also just think it's really mean to like take the mick out of someone for having a name when you don't choose the name. And I know this is a digression, but my head is also thinking, what is the appropriateness of the parents naming OP here a Japanese name? They met and fell in love in Japan. They had a baby born in Japan, which I know doesn't like nap 
naturally grant you nationality of being in that country. But, you know, if you're then going to spend 14 years there, yeah, a lot of me is like, what would be wrong with giving that person a Japanese name? They went to Japanese schools. They integrated with Japanese culture. I don't see a problem with that. I would see a problem if two white people with no Asian heritage whatsoever who lived in the UK and who had no experience of any other culture then chose an incredibly cultural name for their child. I would probably think that that was a little bit odd. Would it be wrong? There are so many nuances that probably would make an entire video in itself. But as for OP here, I think it's very fair for them to have a Japanese name. And more importantly, they didn't choose it. <laughs> it's a part of who they are. So yeah, this seems quite easy to me. Definitely not the asshole. Wow, we're definitely up in the spice. <laughs> Shall we see what other people have to say? Not the asshole. You didn't choose your name. You were literally born in Japan, which makes you Japanese. You're not just pretending to be. Mm. There is an edit here. I'm very glad it exists. It's something I was just about to say myself. I learned today that Japan doesn't grant citizenship by birth, if we're being technical. Thank you for the info. But being born in Japan, growing up there and spending most of your life there is enough to make me think that it's still part of our identity and it still sounds like OP feels that way as well. Totally agree with all of this. And I absolutely used to think the same thing too, that if you were born in a place that means fine, you, you must clearly now be from that place. I'm pretty sure that's the way that it works in America, but I definitely know it doesn't work that way all around the world. Oh, somebody says cultural appropriation is the stupidest thing in existence. And honestly, I have to hard disagree here. I did like a video essay, yonks back, about cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. I definitely think that the term cultural appropriation is overused. I definitely think that most of society is too quick to use buzzwords. Those buzzwords often being cultural appropriation, different forms of mental health, the words like abuse, words like gaslighting. It hurts my brain, but at the same time, I I think it's silly to say that cultural appropriation doesn't exist. I just think we need to be really careful and genuine about when we use it. Because cultural appropriation is a thing and it is not a good thing. And when it is actually happening, we should be calling people out on when they are exploiting cultures for profitable reasons. It may not even be financially profitable, but for beneficial reasons to them at the expense of the culture at hand that is never okay. And to say that that doesn't exist is to deny a lot of the pain that many marginalized groups and protected characteristics that many marginalized groups and marginalized ethnicities and nationalities have gone through and experienced at the hands of the majority, which is often white people. Here we go, I really like this comment. Cultural appropriation is a real thing, but it doesn't apply in this case. For it to be cultural appropriation, there needs to be an actual exploitation, that's what I was trying to think of, of another culture, usually, though not always, for profit. Ooh. I feel like this one was very heavy. What do you think, Peaches? Do you agree? Let me know downstairs. As always, though, please be kind. We don't tolerate any kind of hate here. You know this. I think we should do one more. I know we typically do three, but I recently asked if you wanted to see longer Am I the Asshole videos, so we're trialing this out. Let's see how it goes. Am I the asshole for leaving a date early because of one absurd opinion? I need to know this opinion. I love date stories. They're my favorite. Just generally, often when it's with my friends, I'm sat there like a cheerleader, like, ah! <laughs> on Am I the Asshole, I think the wedding ones are maybe my favorite overall, but uh, dating comes pretty close. Let's read on. I'm a 19 year old woman. I've been taking blind dates that are set up by my best friend and she found this nice guy. Oh no, not a nice guy. She found this nice guy and told me little to describe him. I knew a brief description of his race, hair and eye color. So when I got to the location, I'd be able to find him along with the fact that he is a faithful Christian. I'm okay with this because I myself am a Christian. Blind date at 19? seems unusual, like unusually young, but okay. Well, once I got to the meetup, we first went to walk around the park. Cute date, cute date. And as we were talking, the topic of new pop songs came up. He listed the artists that he liked, and so did I, which includes Doja Cat. We like a little bit of Doja Cat here, a little bit of Wuma. Let me be your woman, a woman, woman, woman. Now he just looked at me and said, you know she sold her soul. No. <laughs> Have you seen her new marketing strategies? Oh, sorry, sorry, shouldn't be laughing. I laughed. I thought he was joking because you can't actually think that somebody sold their soul? Question mark. He asked why I was laughing and I said, this is just stupid. She's just trolling and started doing this right after everyone accused her of selling her soul. Well, he didn't like that and basically said, well, I'm disappointed and you're being tricked and I was just not having it. I excused myself. I said that my boss called for me to cover an hour and left. I called my best friend and she said that she got a text from him saying that he had said that I didn't give him enough chance. But he's a nice guy, OP. He's a nice guy. <sighs> I just don't really want to be with someone who thinks like that or falls for any conspiracy theories, to be honest. Am I 
the asshole. Peesh. Uh, no, my love, I don't think you're the asshole. I do want to clarify my reasons for why I'm saying that. And it's not because Opie's date thought that Doja Cat genuinely sold her soul to the devil. As silly as this may sound to some, these beliefs genuinely are held by some people. And I think we need to be able to respect that fact, especially within society. And whilst in this situation, it may sound like the same thing to say that OP didn't like this person and this view, and therefore she's not the asshole. And at the same time, OP doesn't believe in the selling of souls. And that is why they're not the asshole, right? They sound like the same thing in this post. However, they are not the same thing. And I feel like it's really important to emphasize that it's only the first one that I feel is acceptable. Look, if you've got a view, somebody else has view they're not compatible okay but we can't be judging people for their views and being like oh well you're an asshole for having this view just generally just because you disagree with something doesn't mean that you're an asshole unless what you're doing is being really bigoted or discriminatory then yeah you're an asshole <laughs> but look op i'm sorry it didn't work out you are 19 though you have many many dating years ahead of you i'm struggling to understand why you're being set up on blind dates at this age and i truly wish you the best of luck not the asshole this probably isn't the only crazy theory he 100 believes in i suppose it's not even so much about the theory but the way that he acted. Seems like a red flag to me. I don't think you owe him anything and it's your choice anyway. Ugh, see, like I feel like this comment kind of models the two. I can personally totally see where this comment is coming from. But if we're saying that people are assholes for having crazy theories, that is so subjective. What may be crazy to some people might not be crazy to other people. For example, I believe in global warming and climate change. I think that's a very important thing to be talking about. And if you're somebody who for whatever reason equates climate change with Santa Claus and also does not believe in the fact that the world is burning, that is on you. And that might not necessarily make you an asshole, but it does certainly mean that I will not be dating you. And it's that autonomy in the non-compatibility and being able to say, no, I don't want to date you, that makes OP not the asshole in this situation not their individual beliefs. I don't know if I'm overthinking this. Are you overthinking this, Shaba? He probably thinks the Harry Potter books are the devil's literature. Well, <laughs> let's just quickly move on. Bullet dodged, good job OP, not the asshole. Not the asshole, he's the type that believes that celebrities are in the Illuminati. Again, I feel like this is like criticizing his views and not necessarily focusing on the autonomy point. I think we can see quite clearly that the forum's consensus is not the asshole. What do you think, Peaches? Do you agree? I think this is a very good place to end for today. Did you enjoy the length of this video? Did you enjoy this video generally? If you did, I would super duper appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and specifically, if you haven't already done so, if you could subscribe if you'd like to see more. I make videos in the Fishing for Arsehole series every Monday and I make videos generally every Monday and Thursday. And regardless of whether you click that little sub button or not, I encourage you to be kind and have a great day. See you next time with another video. Bye.